Hello and welcome to Quarterlight. Quarterlight, if you don't know, is a small fledgling YouTube channel that looks at car brochures on the internet. And today we're going to look at the Daff Daffodil. <laughs> So let's start by talking a little bit about DAF. What is DAF? Well, it was a small Dutch car maker. The first DAF, the DAF um, 600 Variomatic, was first shown at the Amsterdam Motor Show in 1958. And it was just a revolution. It was really a shocking car. It was a small air-cooled car, carry four people in reasonable comfort small uh, little air-cooled engine but most importantly that variomatic or cvt gearbox and i hear you all saying we hate them you know they're in nissans we don't want them we'd rather have an overall auto normal automatic if we want any sort of uh, uh, automatic vehicle but Regardless what you think about CVTs, this was a different time. In the late 50s, small cars didn't come with automatic gearboxes. If you wanted an automatic, you usually had to have a large, uh, larger car and a higher spec vehicle, particularly in Europe. Um, so there really wasn't much of a choice. Um, and also what I also think is automatics in the late 50s were absolutely horrendous things. Two or three speed automatics, very, very inefficient. This was a far better system at the time. It could move them little pulleys and change uh, the pulleys to be in the right gear, essentially, um, at the right time. And it possibly was one of the easiest cars to drive, simply two pedals like an automatic but simply a lever with either forward neutral or reverse that was it so it's particularly popular with sort of like the older population so what came next was the car we're looking at today the daff daffodil launched in 1961 went all the way to 1967 and i think it's quite a, attractive with a little bit of a quirky little design and I guess being called the Daft Daffodil, it possibly didn't um, lead to younger buyers buying it. It's not exactly a cool name, although I like it. I much prefer something called a Daffodil than something called a Thunderbird. I think that's far cooler. Uh, but it did particularly um, was sold more to the older buyer for sure because it wasn't particularly cool at the time. And it was so, so simple to drive. So pottering around the town would have been perfect. This essentially became this, uh, the DAF 33. And while I've got these brochures up, uh, just a nice comparison to see how small this little DAF daffodil brochure is compared to this um, full-size brochure of a DAF 33. But anyway, let's um, open this brochure up and see what else we can see. So here we go. We can see this uh, first cover in a little bit more detail here. And it says the new fast daffodil. I don't think the word fast and daff has ever really been used together, but there we go. And like we say, it's showing here fully automatic. Yes, it's using that very automatic uh, transmission. I always have to be careful. I often call it the variomatic gearbox, but of course there's no gears there. Um, it's really the variomatic um, transmission, if you will, or CVT, a continuous variable transmission. And that variomatic transmission was the brainchild of Dr. Hub Van Dorn, who was um, kind of like the DAF person. Uh, Van Dorn Automobile Fabrican is the DAF, D-A-F, in, in effect. So there we have it. And like I say, an unusual, little quirky little car, but still an attractive one. And at the same time, the DAF also launched the DAF, uh, it was just called the DAF 750. 
essentially the same car, but the Daft Daffodil was the highest spec version in most markets. It appears on this UK brochure though, uh, there is just the Daffodil. Um, it's talking about the Daffodil uh, uh, Deluxe, and this would have been the Deluxe one, or the Daffodil in most markets. A sort of two-tone paintwork, uh, lots of chrome on there, or oh, there was the standard version, um, like less luxurious. Um, it was finished in blue grey with ivory coloured bumpers, so a more basic model, if you will. But anyway, let's open this brush up and see what else we can see. It's only a short one today. And here we can see the rear view of the daffodil. And I think it's quite, like I say, it's quirky, but it's quite a pretty little car, really. As it says, the new daffodil, very automatic lively fast fully automatic two pedal controls and this is quite an interesting text as they often do on these 50s and early 60s cars so i think it's worth a little bit of a read it says here eye-catching beauty exciting performance the new daffodil smart and stylishly elegant in appearance lively and nimble in busy traffic a spacious car with newly designed extremely comfortable seats unrestricted vision and a cavernous boot. There is a wide choice of external colours with matching upholstery. Fashionable, luxurious and fabulous to drive. And this is kind of like the interesting bit where it's talking about that very automatic transmission. For in the daffodil, all gear changing is precise controlled by the accelerator. No clutch pedal, no gear lever or similar controls. These are out of place in today's ever-growing volume of traffic, which calls for the driver's undivided attention, peace of mind, and freedom of action. That is why the Daffodil is equipped with a unique automatic transmission, which allows brisk acceleration and rapid safe overtaking without any pauses for gear changing accelerator steering wheel and brake pedal that's all no other car provides such effortless control and is such fun to drive quite amusing when it's talking about this ever-growing volume of traffic i'm sure most of us would like to go back to the uh, late 50s for those nice empty roads but nevertheless here it is the new daf variomatic a clever innovative little car at the time and here we have the next page a very late 50s little scene um, very unusual they're going to play a game of tennis i guess and it says complete comfort and then on the right hand side ahead of its time for progressive motorists i wonder how much ahead of its time they realized they really were when they printed this brochure now we're looking at CVTs again, love it or let or hate it, you know, it just shows how ahead of its time this car really was. The interesting part in this text is where it talks about the Deluxe version. It says the Daffodil Deluxe is equipped with a host of useful accessories, including windscreen wipers and washers with joint control. There you go. Uh, the Daff Daffodil Extra has additional equipment for super comfort, e.g. air conditioning and rear ventilator windows. And there you go, air conditioning on this little, this little car. That's quite a big thing as well. So it was really something a little bit special. And then we come to this back page, this little specifications page. Some interesting little dimensions and weights. Maximum speed on this car, it's showing 65 miles per hour. That's possibly with a little bit of a wind behind it, I would suggest, on this small little engine. Like I say, it's a air-cooled engine, and it's 746 cc's. So, a very small little engine. At the bottom here, 
It's same finish, it says a choice of various exterior and interior colours, stainless steel bumpers, grill and hubcaps, folding sunshine roof and two-tone paintwork with white sidewall tyres optional. And then we've got the Daffodil Deluxe Extra, offers the addition features of a passenger armrest, a grab handle on the dashboard, vanity mirror, air conditioning and rear ventilator windows. The standard model which is less luxurious and I think that's really what we're talking about when we talk about the um, DAF 750, this more basic model. The standard model with a less luxurious uh, is finished in a blue grey with ivory coloured bumpers. And then at the bottom of course it shows this Van Dorn's Automobile Fabric or DAF. And of course, printed in Holland, it says. Uh, so these little cars from the Netherlands, quite an unique, special little car. We've also got this little picture of that Urkeld engine and that variomatic belt system. Slightly better picture in the DAF 33 brochure. So I think we should just have a quick look at that little belt system. So I've kind of like something I don't usually do. I kind of like pinched up a, a little bit of a picture from that DAF 33 brochure, a newer brochure that shows things a little bit more detail. You can see that's a really good shot. And I thought it was worth including in this brochure of that Variomatic CVT transmission. And you can see the text, it, that particular brochure is from the Netherlands. And you can see that little belt system, how it could contract uh, for lower and higher gears. So basically, it was always in the right, you know, I don't want to say gear, but it was always in the right gear at the right time. And this little car got a name as being uh, known as the car with a hundred gears because, you know, you've got infinitely different um, settings of that belt drive system always being where it needs to be. Like I say, a lot of people don't like CVTs now. And that's fair enough. I personally don't mind them, but that's fair enough. But like I said, this is the late 50s, or in this case, the 60s. And it was a fantastic little option or something a little bit different, something that really worked better than automatic cars at the time. Although I know a lot of people, even at the time, was a little bit scared of this belt system are ah, the rubber bands it's the car with the rubber bands that are going to break so people were still wary of the system but i think it was far better than automatic transmissions at the time and like i said it was also known as being the easiest car in the world to drive and i think it's something that certainly should be remembered daf of course at least for building passenger cars isn't around around so we should remember these clever little innovative designs of these car makers I think so there we go the DAF daffodil I guess its best quality could also be seen in its worst quality that very matic transmission was very clever wasn't it it was certainly better than most automatics out there but also people were a little bit wary of it and that could have been what affected sales of the car um, and may be affected whether DAF survived as a company or not. It was almost a car so ahead of its time with that CVT transmission that people were a little bit wary of it. But it was fantastic. There was no real need to be wary of it. It was a great little idea and made a very fuel efficient little car. Incidentally, one little fact about these very automatic DAFs are because you had that little little gear that went in. I keep saying gear. It's not really a gear, but there you go. You got this gear lever that I went forward or reverse. These little cars went as fast in reverse as they did forward. So that actually grew into a little bit of a a race series for those crazy Dutch. They used to drive these things as fast as they could in reverse, which is bizarre isn't it but what a fantastic little thing and a very unique little characteristic about these cars thank you so much for watching course light today 
I hope you're, I've just about finished my cup of tea. I hope you uh, are drinking something nice too. I'm going to have to grab another one in a moment. But I hope you enjoy watching these brochure reviews. I certainly enjoy making them. And there'll be many more brochure reviews coming. So please do subscribe, like, and comment if you know anything about these cars or you've got direct um, knowledge or experience of owning one of them. But we'll say thank you so much for watching. Take care and goodbye.